Well, this second video deals with implementing uh, the model, the complete model. It has two parts. Well, the little part of the DC bus and then the LCL filter. And the theory that is underlying this model has been explained in the first video. It goes without saying that before starting this first exercise, you have to watch video one in full. And video one is about the theoretical background that you need to know, understand before doing this first exercise. I will be available for questions using Teams, but before sending a question, just think. Normally you have all the material that you need in order to do this first exercise. Well, the first thing that you have to do is to download the two zip files that you see over there and to extract them into separate folders. Well, next you can open a uh, MATLAB and go to uh, the right uh, folder, right? Here you can see that I have unzipped this first zip file. Okay, this contains the M files and the Simulink models that you have to start from and this other zip file is unzipped over here it contains all the libraries and the first thing that you have to do in MATLAB is to make sure that this library is put in the MATLAB part and you do this by simply clicking right clicking and then say add to path and then say selected folders and subfolders if you do that all the files that are in the library are known to MATLAB. Well, when you're ready, you can click on the folder with all the material to start exercise one. You can open the Simulink file. We'll leave that aside and we'll have a look at the variables.m file that you can open. Well, it's clear from the file that you should not change the parameters that are in the first part in the document so if you make any changes in the file you should make them here below this section that says define your own parameters below okay so this section should be unchanged and it contains parameters that are related to the actual system don't forget that your software could be used to run the grid coupling algorithm on the actual system for instance you can see that the switching frequency is defined it's 16 kilohertz here you have the parameters of the lcl filters so these are the denominations that you should use in your model and this is the value of the inductance of the first inductor you have the same thing for the second inductor you have the capacitance of the capacitor that is in the LCL filter and because the elements are not ideal well you have series resistance uh, for the two inductors and a parallel resistance on top of the capacitor of your LCL filter okay you also have values for um, the DC bus uh, the capacitance of this capacitor of the DC bus and then also the value of the resistance that is in parallel to this DC bus capacitor okay and you even have the value that you can use to initialize your DC bus this has to be done in the corresponding integrator well, when you look at the Simulink model, you will see that there are three sections, Command, Scopes and Diagnosis, Process and then Control. Well, let us look now at this first area here where you have Command, Scopes and Diagnosis. Well, here you see that you have some scopes and if you click on the scope, Everything is ready. You see that you see the important signals such as the grid voltage uh, the currents at the level of the inverter or at the grid and the DC bus uh, voltage, right? You should not make any changes in this section but it allows you also the section to interact with the system. On the actual system, well, when you 
a kind of interact, you have to make sure that the system is connected to the grid. This is done by this button here, okay? So you can connect and disconnect. And this button is used to enable the control. You're working in simulation, you should leave these two buttons as is, okay? So connected and enabled okay this button will allow you to change the dc bus voltage and this button here will allow you to set certain current set points and that will become obvious later on in the videos well let us now look at this section with the process and it contains a configurable system you know about configurable systems because in your lab on state space control you've been working with configurable systems you can see that it's a configurable system when because when you right click you see block choice now it's uh, in the instance model but if you would test your software on the actual system you would have to choose three phase hardware okay so the model is chosen now and if we have a look at the model this is how it looks like so the top part here okay is to be left unchanged and you have to build your model in between vimf and these outputs VDC, EINF, EGRID, VCAP, VGRID. Okay, so you have to remove these output and input dummy terminals and construct your model in between those outputs and this one input, which is the inverter uh, voltage. This has been explained you in the uh, first video. So, of course, you'll need to change your model, and for that, you need to go to the library. And if you open the library, well, you'll find two models. This is the configurable system. This is the model that will allow you to connect with the three-phase hardware. And this is the model you're going to work in. Of course, before starting to work in that you have to allow uh, changes and you have to unlock the library and then when you click in there you can start changing okay between the only input vimf and the five outputs of the system so this is where you construct your model well the last area that we have to consider is the control area and in this region you're going to implement your grid controller okay your grid converter controller and the inputs uh, or the signals that are going to be used by this grid converter controller are available as is also the only output and because you know that your uh, grid converter controller will produce the voltages that are going to be applied on your inverter well you can now start the first exercise okay and i suggest that you would copy this folder and paste it and then give it another name i've named it for instance exo1 construction of the dc bus and lcl model and we can have a look at what's inside okay i can open my model well, we can now have a look inside the model and as you have seen, well, I have removed all the ground terminals and I have constructed my model in between this input VIMF and these five outputs. Okay, so maybe the only thing that you have to know is how to construct a VGrid and you know that there is a block that allows you to construct a sinusoidal wave what you maybe don't know is that you can actually construct the three phases of the signal directly okay so of course you'll have to make a grid at uh, 
230 volts RMS, so you have to uh, multiply by the square root of 2 in order to have the peak value. You know the frequency, but the frequency is expressed in radians per second, so, so you have to take 2 times pi times 50, and then you can generate three signals by just using a vector for the phase. The first one having a phase of zero, and then, of course, the other ones you have to shift by uh, 120 degrees. Well, once you are ready and that you have implemented your model, we are now ready to test it. But the problem is we don't have a controller yet. Well, we'll have to do a little trick to test it. And for that, I need to draw my LCL filter for one phase. So this is L1, this is L2, this is C. So this is the voltage V cap equal to VC, right? And at the input, I have the inverter voltage that later on will be computed by the controller. As I said, we don't have a controller yet, but I want to test my model. So what I will do is impose that V inf is equal to V cap. This is why I've used this link over here. Okay, by this link I'm imposing that V inf is equal to V cap. So I'm imposing here a zero voltage over the inductor, and this means that E inf is equal to E L1 will be approximately zero. So remember that we have connected V cap to V inf, okay? So we have no voltage over the first inductor, which means that the current E inf, and the current that is flowing through the first inductor is zero, and it is actually very close to an inverter that is not enabled. Well, we are now ready to test the model, and this you can do by clicking on the run button and the result should look like this so what you see here is the grid uh, voltage okay you see the three phases that are shifted by 120 degrees as predicted the inverter current is zero this is the voltage at the capacity and on the capacity of the LCL filter and here you have the grid current and here maybe we can zoom in so we see that it's indeed a current and it's around one amp okay uh, what you can do as an exercise is compute and verify that indeed this current must be around 1 amp with the values of the LCL filter that I've given you. And what you see here is that your DC bus starts from a value, okay, in your file it says 600 volts DC, but I've changed it to 650. It starts from this 600 volts DC and then it starts to decrease. That's because, well, there is uh, no power exchange with the grid and there is a power loss because of this resistance that is in parallel to the bus capacitor. Well, we have seen in the simulation that when there is no current flowing through the first inductor, there is still a current flowing through the second inductor so that there is a current E grid that is approximately 1 amp. So it is possible to compute this current E grid theoretically and this is what I have done and you should do the same and I've put that in a MATLAB file and the formula gives me indeed E grid is equal to approximately 1 amp. So this is one way of verifying that your model is indeed correct.